Hello, my name is David Thomas, and I'm the manager of the Educational Labs in the Crocker Science Center. In this video, we'll go over the different parts of a micropipette and how to properly use this important piece of laboratory equipment. In labs, micropipettes are used for transferring small quantities of solution with a high level of precision and accuracy. For many solutions encountered in general lab work, air displacement micropipettes are sufficient. However, for more problematic solutions like those that are corrosive, volatile, or particularly hazardous, a positive displacement pipette should be used instead. In this video, we will be demonstrating the use of an air displacement pipette. This type of pipette consists of the following seven parts. The shaft, the volume adjustment dial, the ejector arm, the volume readout, the disposable tip, the tip ejector button, and the plunger. On the top of the plunger, there is a label which indicates the volume range for a particular micropipette. Now that you are familiar with the purpose and components of a pipette, let's look at how to properly use a micropipette. To begin, determine the volume of liquid to be transferred and choose a micropipette with an appropriate volume range. Here is a table that will help you determine the correct pipette to use for a given volume. In this example, we will be extracting 100 microliters of this liquid, so it is appropriate to use a P200 micropipette. Using a micropipette for volumes outside of its intended range can damage the inner mechanisms of the pipette. When setting the volume to the desired amount, start by holding the micropipette in one hand and turning the volume adjustment dial or the plunger with your other hand. Turning clockwise will decrease the volume of the micropipette, while turning counterclockwise will increase the volume. The plunger is generally quicker and easier to turn than the volume adjustment dial. When adjusting the volume, it is important to keep an eye on the volume readout of the micropipette. To increase the accuracy of your measurements, it is better to finish any volume adjustment by turning the chosen dial slowly clockwise. For example, if you are trying to increase the volume on this micropipette to 100 microliters, go one third of a turn past the 100 microliter mark before returning to that exact point utilizing a clockwise rotation. Note that the volume readout is in microliters. Some micropipettes indicate a decimal point with a red number. Here are some examples of readouts from micropipettes set at different volumes. When the desired volume has been selected, firmly press and twist the micropipette into a disposable tip. The twisting helps remove air pockets between the shaft and pipette tip to create an airtight seal. The tip should firmly stay on the micropipette with only a small amount of applied pressure. Applying too much force can break the pipette. Now that you have a tip on your pipette, be mindful of how you handle it. Touching the tip to any unintended surface could lead to contamination of both the tip and or your sample. To draw liquid into the pipette tip, press the plunger down until you feel a bit of resistance. This is called the first stop. Maintaining the plunger level at this first stop, and while keeping the pipette vertical, lower the pipette tip into the liquid. Micropipettes should always be perpendicular to the ground and not at an angle during this stage. The tip should be submerged in the solution, but not touching the bottom of the container. Ideally, the tip should be submerged around two to three millimeters below the surface of the solution. Now, slowly release the plunger so that it returns to its starting position. Be careful not to release the plunger quickly. Doing so could cause liquid to go beyond the tip and enter the micropipette itself, which could lead to damage and or contamination of the pipette. If you suspect that liquid has entered the micropipette, notify a TA or instructor who can easily disassemble and clean it. When the liquid has been extracted and drawn up into the tip, check to ensure there are no bubbles that could affect the volume. Note that while moving the micropipette, it should always remain vertical with the pipette tip oriented towards the ground. This prevents liquids from entering the micropipette. Remember, do not touch the tip to any unintended surfaces to avoid possible contamination. 
After checking that the correct amount of liquid has been extracted, place the pipette tip over the new container you wish to transfer to. Angle the micropipette so that it is touching the inside of the container with an angle of approximately 0 to 45 degrees. This ensures no droplets remain on the pipette tip. Slowly press the plunger down to the first stop and wait one second. Then finish pressing down the plunger to the next point of resistance called the second stop, which is usually when the plunger is completely depressed. Check that all liquid has been distributed into the container and if so, place the pipette tip over the pipette tip sharps container and press down on the ejector arm to eject the tip from the micropipette. Micropipettes are high precision instruments that can be useful tools in the lab when used properly. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask a TA or instructor or to reference the user guide provided by the manufacturer that is shown on screen now and linked in the description. Thank you for your attention and good luck in your micropipetting endeavors.